in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Someone is praying. This is my night, oh God, even by your spirit. For the Bible says, Lord is that spirit. It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Somebody is praying. A man of God is praying, a mother is praying, a father is praying, a prophet in the making is praying, a businessman is praying. Visit me tonight in the name of Jesus. Visit me by your power and by your glory. Jesus mighty name we pray for in Jesus mighty name we pray I want to again thank his lordship the bishop and his dear wife extending the same regards to the entire leadership of this great commission this church thank you so much and then a big thank you to the entire state and this region for opening your heart to receive of that which the lord has placed upon our lives i do not take it for granted and i'm truly grateful the lord honor you in the name of jesus please be seated There are three things I want to request of you right now. The first is that you please lend me your rapt attention. For the Bible says the entrance of thy word gives light and understanding even unto the simple. The second is your discernment. I want you to be very sensitive. The Bible says, while Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell upon all them that heard him. Hallelujah. And number three, your heart must be ready to take whatever action or instruction that the Lord brings in the course of the teaching. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it thank you jesus now all through my session in this conference for many of you i presume who may just be attending the session or at least my session for the first time let me just bring us up to speed on the things that we've been discussing this is a believers conference and it's important that we know what the spirit of god is saying we began to discuss the journey of the believer 
helping us understand the pathway that leads from an unbeliever until you attain a stature in the spirit where you can be mightily used by God and I made a few illustrations especially for yesterday night I did tell us for just for a quick recap that the foundation of a believer's experience or the journey the faith journey and the faith experience begins with an encounter with Jesus you see remember that the Bible says for there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved so in in exploring the things of the spirit and beginning your journey as a believer it is important that you encounter Jesus the son of the living God and the Bible says that when you encounter Jesus among the many benefits that come to you is life eternal this is the record that God hath given us eternal life and that whosoever hath the son hath that life are we together I also did point to us that not everything about Jesus not every information about Jesus translates to eternal life for instance believing Jesus is a good man does not give you eternal life believing Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary does not give you eternal life you have to believe in his substitutionary sacrifice you have to believe him as Lord and as Christ hallelujah then we discussed that when you get saved as we know the new birth experience for many believers sadly that is the apex of all they know about walking with God and I did point to us that that only begins the believers journey hallelujah that the moment you get saved the next need for you is to locate a teaching priest according to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and that they shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding so that the teaching priest in partnership with the word of God and in partnership with the Holy Spirit now begins to lead that new believer into a journey that we call transformation are we together now that transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience Paul prayed and said my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you the absence of transformation will render that believer even though saved he will not be effective not to himself and not to anyone because the Bible says in Galatians 4 that an heir for as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be Lord of all are we together so the believer begins the journey of transformation and I told you that your journey of transformation also doubles as your training I'm recapping so that it's important that all of us connect to what the Spirit of God is doing then I did say that when you begin your journey towards transformation your first assignment is not to find your purpose your first assignment is not to know what you have been called to do when you begin that journey your pursuit the object of your pursuit is Jesus not destiny it is as you explore Jesus as you get to know him then you now begin to find your place in life and destiny discovering destiny without Jesus being the epicenter of your pursuit will only lead you in trouble are we together now so I told us that there are spiritual pathways that lead to several kinds of believers and that all the names this is where I want you to now listen all the names in the Bible that you call Abraham Isaac Jacob Melchizedek Elijah Mary Apostle Paul Peter that these are not just great men the names that you call but that those names also embody spiritual pathways that produce a kind of believer it's important you need to understand this so when you mention Peter Peter was not just the disciple of Jesus Peter represents a spiritual pathway that if and when you follow you will access that mantle are we together now so that all the names you see in the Bible and the exploits that were wrought by them they 
defined spiritual pathways that the believer can follow and that if you follow diligently with time you will start evolving to become a kind of believer and i did tell us that anointings and mantles do not just fall on people because they want it anointings and mantles follow vessels that have followed a particular pathway so if you sense that the mantle of elijah is looking for you praying it is not what will bring it there is a pathway that if you follow you will be molded to become that vessel called elijah and that when you assume it that mantle will fall upon you are we together now this is very important and so that we are mandated by god to through the instrumentality of the teaching priest the word of god and the spirit of god we are methodically mentored line upon line precept upon precept until we now understand the ways of god this is very important and it matters how you are built in the kingdom because if you are not built holistically there are many things you would not know and in ignorance you cannot do much for the kingdom are we together and then this morning we took it from there a step further and i began to show us that in the believers training now listen carefully the bible tells us in ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 we consider that this morning it says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in i remember telling us that what you call destiny is not something you invent it's not something you choose that according to god's predeterminate counsel everybody has a predestined assignment your job is to align with the holy spirit and to be led through that pathway that builds and molds you to become that just because you were predestined does not mean you will manifest it manifesting it depends on your alignment and your submission to the dealings of the spirit part time and per season are we together now and i did tell us that the kind of training that the holy spirit submits you to determines the kind of believer that he wants to produce the training for elijah is not the training for esther the training for job are we together it's not the training for samuel that is the idea of consecration we this we spoke a bit about the concept of consecration and i did tell us that biblical consecration is twofold the first dimension of consecration is abstinence leaving certain things but the second dimension of consecration is devotion being committed towards something so if the only thing you know about consecration is leaving sin and all of that that is wonderful but the, the the more superior idea of consecration is to be set apart and to be doggedly committed towards a pathway like a medical student focuses on the pathway that leads to a doctor if a medical student finds himself following the pathway of an engineering student or following the pathway of um say a theater art student at the end of it he cannot be called a doctor because the pathways lead to certain mantles and certain graces are we together now very important and for the purpose of our discussion let me just recap on the things i shared in the morning i told us that the work the word workmanship means a display of a man's artistry I gave an example with a tailor when you carry a cloth that is finished look up please you carry a cloth that is finished you call that finished cloth the workmanship of the tailor are we together not the cloth that is still being sewn that does not display his creativity so when the bible says we are his workmanship that means the finished version of you should reveal something about jesus to your world that when you allow the spirit of god to walk in you when you follow a certain pathway in the spirit there is a kind of believer you will become and there is a dimension of the excellence and the glory of god that will be emanated from your life are we together so romans chapter 8 and verse 18 says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time it says is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 
it says for the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of god that creation was subject to vanity not willingly but by the first Adam, him that subjected the same in hope, and that creation is looking forward to the, um, give us 21 now, that creation is looking forward to being free from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints. So when God trains you and as he builds you, there is an end product, there is a kind of believer there is a kind of businessman. There is a kind of apostle, a kind of pastor, a kind of prophet he seeks to produce. And you will never attain unto that destiny until you follow the predefined pathway. According to Jeremiah 6, 16, he says to stand in the way, that old way, that ancient path, and says to ask. And when you find that path, he says to walk ye in it, and you will find rest for your soul. If we are still together, say amen. In the training of the believer so that you become a vessel unto honor the bible puts it this way nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure he says having this seal that the lord knoweth them that are his are we together he says and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity then he says in a great house in every great house includes a great church includes a great state a great city it says there are four kinds of vessels number one the vessel of gold number two silver number three wood number four clay it says some vessels are unto honor while some vessels are unto dishonor but that if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor meat for the master's use so a few people becoming so distinguished and the glory of God being revealed in their lives and then other people living nominal Christianity is not the will of God. This is what that scripture is saying. That when you find a believer that has been able to host the glory of God, the power of God, the favor of God, the grace of God, that it is not as though God just isolated that person and decided to discard the rest. That that person you see walk in keeping with his predefined destiny and that state of endurance, are we together? It says looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame in your journey that journey that evolves you to become a career a host of the glory of god in experience you can get tired and you can choose as an act of your will that lord i am tired i'm not willing to go far i, I can't go beyond this level god will respect your will but the consequence here is that the predestined dimension of glory that should be revealed will not be captured. Are we together now? The Bible says there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial. Are we together now? Yes. It says that even among the stars, trying to show different men, it says one excels among another in glory. That means if you see a particular believer manifesting the multifaceted dimensions of God, it's not just the issue of a gift. It's not just the issue of anointing. That what you are seeing is a report card. It is an attestation to the fact that he has walked in keeping with the path of destiny. That that which has been predetermined by God after learning that this is the pathway a mark for him or her that he has obtained grace to walk diligently keeping certain principles and i listed five of them this morning please if you were not here this morning i want you to go online and get that message listen to it are we together now it's called predestined unto glory part one was yesterday part two was this morning I listed five things let me repeat it one last time so that you will write that according there is an apostolic model for the building the formation of Christ and for the manifestation of the glory in the life of any believer and that you must walk in keeping with that path you can use this formula to grow your church you can use this formula to become a mighty man in business in ministry in any endeavor whatsoever Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship 
and in breaking of bread and in prayer there was a certain routine that the church the early church followed and ordinary people now became strong people are we together now confused people now became mighty people that if you walk in keeping with that pathway it will be impossible for you to become a weak believer number one i said the first demand that which you must submit yourself to as a spiritual pathway that leads to glory is strategic and systemic prayer life you must have a strategic and a systemic prayer life just being a man of prayer alone is not enough to evolve you to become a person of power and stature there are many believers that pray Africa is a continent that prays. Nigeria is a nation that prays. But what we are largely doing is praying amiss. I did tell us in the morning that there are four biblical assignments of prayer. And the greatest assignment of prayer as revealed in scripture is not to obtain requests and to make petitions. No. The greatest assignment of prayer is to be used as a tool for your spiritual transition. That you can use prayer to metamorphose from a weak you to a strong you. From a limited you to an unlimited you. According to Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, Jesus now, he says the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment became white and glistering. Are we still together? Hallelujah. So systemic and strategic prayer. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, like we considered in the morning, the Bible says how that Peter and John went to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. Please say after me, the hour of prayer. Everybody who wants to know God and wants to evolve into a vessel of power, of glory and of honor must have your hour of prayer. It is up to you to work with the Holy Spirit to determine a time period where with discipline you will maintain a consistent prayer life. When God wants to help you, God himself, based on your level of yieldedness, can suggest times of prayer for you. And with it, you will begin to become a mighty man and a woman in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Prayer is very powerful. Many have subscribed to the ministry of prayer and have become mighty giants in the spirit. But if you do take note, I told you that there is an, a side effect to praying only. As powerful as prayer is, if the only thing that you do is prayer, you are going to get into trouble. Why? Because prayer activates your organs to interact in the realm of the spirit or with the realm of the spirit. And that is where the deceiver comes. He can appear as an angel of light, take advantage of your alignment and give you lying visions, false experiences. There are many people who went to the place of prayer and returned back with experiences that when you check against the character of God, it was not of God so praying alone you may call yourself a prayer warrior but, but if all you do is praying alone you are going to get into trouble because Satan can appear as an angel of light when Jesus went to pray in Matthew chapter 4 at the end of his prayer he met Satan prayer does not automatically drive Satan in fact the consistency of your prayer life sends an alert in the realm of the spirit that somebody is rising and there are spirits that will come to your life on account of your efficient prayer. That leads to the next experience, the ministry of the word. The assignment of the word of God is to help you to create boundaries to your experiences so that any experience that is inconsistent with scripture, you have a right to discard it. Are we together? We saw a display of the ministry of the word and prayer in the life of Jesus. Matthew chapter 4. All this we considered in the morning. I don't want to go into it. We have a lot to do tonight. Jesus prayed. But when Satan came to Jesus, he did not say, I prayed. He said, it is written. So if all you have is a rich prayer life and a poor word bank, you will still be deceived as if you are not a Christian. What gives you stability and stature? is it is written but now you see like i told us in the morning satan to switch and started speaking scripture him too he said it is written 
That is where the ministry of prayer comes because it now sharpens your discernment to look beyond the speakings of men so that someone can prophesy what looks like is true but like Peter you will discern by prayer that although what you are saying is correct but the spirit behind it is not of God. Are we together now? Number three, the third requirement, the pathway that every believer must follow in addition to prayer and then the ministry of the word is number three, corporate fellowship. Corporate fellowship. The Bible says not neglecting the assembling of yourselves as the manner of some is. Psalm 133 says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. I did tell us that every believer must have a community of like-minded believers that you connect to. It is the key to sustaining kingdom values. No matter how yielded you are, in isolation to a larger body of believers, there are certain things about God you will never know. Are we together? And then number four, the fourth pathway that we discussed in the morning is competence competence you must submit yourself to competence as touching your area of call i did observe that when many believers are teaching on the training of the believer we ignore the place of competence you must be competent study to show yourself the bible says approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth whether you are a man of god called into the fivefold ministry a politician a businessman competence in our world has tremendous rewards proverbs 22 29 seest thou a man diligent in his business the bible says he shall not are we together now many of us the reason why we are before mean men and not before kings is that we have embraced a life of mediocrity so as much as we love the lord we are not competent in anything as a preacher you are not competent as a businessman you are not competent as a worship minister you are not competent let me tell you the truth this is the generation that follows results and if you cannot become a competent person get ready to be frustrated people love you but they love themselves for instance if you are a man of god you will never be able to command the loyalty and the followership of people no matter how sincere you are when you are incompetent oh lord our god how excellent is your name competence and you see there is no gift of competence in scripture competence comes by labor by study by discipline by dedication i daniel understood by books you will have to sit down god is calling you to be great make sure that you don't just throw yourself around in hope that anointing will come and replace competence the the, the listen the power of the anointing like you'll be learning tonight is displayed when it comes upon a vessel that has done its assignment in terms of competence hallelujah so that was number four prayer the ministry of the word corporate gathering of believers competence and what was the last one what did you say character character that is the last dealing of the spirit that produces men of power character the bible says add to your faith virtue to your virtue this to that and it says if these things be in you and remain you will neither be barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ and that when you walk in keeping with these things you will never fall no matter how prayerful you are no matter how worded you are for want of word no matter how competent you are if you lack character there is no longevity of impact for you and i did say that of the many character traits you must trust the grace of god to embrace the highest of them that i know is humility in pride both satan and god will fight you satan is already fighting you by default but by the time you become arrogant you put yourself in a position where nothing can help you because the anointing was not designed to fight God. The anointing was designed to bring everything to the obedience of Christ. 
But when it is God that is fighting you now, you cannot use an anointing to fight him back. Hmm. Are we together? Say character. One more time, say character. So please, you can imagine that I've not started our discussion this night. Oh. Praise the name of the Lord. This was a recap. Get the teaching and listen to it and the Lord will grant us grace. Are we ready for tonight? Someone's life is going to change for good. Amen. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. The key that I'm showing you tonight, I beseech you in the name of Jesus Christ, that you take this key serious and watch it turn your life and turn you into a sign and a wonder. Pray in the spirit for one minute and then we explore the word of God for tonight. Shabrande geba la kosia fraskiba. Embran soveselika pariatu kasebrast. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's begin our teaching. I told us about the pathway of the believer. Number one is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God, and that translates to salvation. Number two, transformation. That transformation is a very long journey. The journey that makes you to become like Christ in experience doubles as your process of training. Are we together? That in transformation, you find your destiny. In transformation, you get to know the Lord more. And the third and final phase is called empowerment. Empowerment. The third phase for the believer to now become a vessel of glory a vessel unto honor you step to the stage of empowerment please write it down this is where we begin to discuss the matters of the anointing now and the power of god empowerment most believers have not learned the value of spiritual empowerment most believers have a lot of information they are sincere people but they have downplayed and rejected the power of the holy spirit and the place of spiritual empowerment generally and others have left it to men of god apostles and prophets and you hear them say no 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 i'm just a businessman i'm just a politician leave the issue of the anointing to men and women of god why do you need the power of god in your life let me give you two reasons number one why do you need empowerment in your faith adventure number one i wrote here that to fulfill your assignment and to advance the program of god to fulfill your assignment and to advance the program of god skill and human competence is not enough once it has to do with fulfilling your God-ordained destiny and then advancing the program of God, skill and human competence is not enough. You will need more than skill, I submit to you. You will need more than human competence if you want to birth the purposes of God effectively. Hallelujah. The first assignment of spiritual power is to engrace you to be able to fulfill your God ordained destiny it takes more than skill did the Bible not say except the Lord builds a house it says they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over a city it said the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning the Bible says and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow it says but he gives his beloved sleep so when it has to do with birthing the purposes of God, it will take more than intellectual power. It will take more than just, um, it said it is not by power, human power, not by might, but by my spirit. Say amen. The second reason why believers need to be empowered is because of a very interesting statement Jesus himself made. Jesus in bringing the revelation of the church started by asking them a question 
he said who do men say that i the son of man am some said you are elijah some said you are one of the prophets he said but now who do you say that i am and they all kept quiet peter speaking by the spirit said i know who thou art he says thou art christ the son of the living god are we right on that and then he said peter flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of my father and he says thou art peter and he says upon this rock i will build my church my ecclesia and he says the gates of hell jesus himself is speaking about the church and he does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there is an adversary and he said the adversary is not just an individual called satan it is an organized system he calls it the gate of hell it was paul in his pauline exegesis now his epistle to the saints paul by revelation got the organogram of the satanic kingdom and he now began to teach us and he structured it so intelligently he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood is that in your bible but against principalities against powers is that true against rulers of darkness against spiritual wickedness that reside in the heavenlies paul saw this by revelation and he said listen the church is being confronted by an intelligent satanic kingdom when the man who was possessed of a legion in Gadara, when Jesus came and the demons began to speak, there was a legion of demons, but not all of them were speaking. So there was an organized satanic kingdom. Jesus himself began to speak and said, when a spirit leaves a man, that that spirit goes through dry regions. Is that true? Looking for a place of refuge and not finding any, the spirit will advise itself that I will go back to my house is still calling the man my house so it means that these demon spirits are stubborn even though they have left they are still claiming ownership my house and he said when he comes and finds the believer clean but empty it will not just stay alone it will go and gather other demons greater than itself that means there is ranking in the demonic kingdom listen carefully when daniel came to babylon and god was lifting him through the efficiency of his prayer life there were spirits that operated the spirits of the medis and the persians are we together now these spirits observed that there was one man whose prayer life and spiritual understanding was corrupting the program of hell it, it seemed to be crippling that antichrist system and those spirits started walking through people in government to pass a law to pass a policy that to prohibit prayer for just 30 days that was the only allowance satan needed to wreak havoc within a territory listen to me if you must bear the purposes of god in yola let me announce to you that there are spirits in every region that predates the people who came to that region whether you believe it or not is not the issue you understand Jesus himself acknowledged himself as the head of all principalities. He acknowledged their existence. And it is spiritual naivety, I tell you sincerely, to ignore the reality of the dark kingdom. Many people do not know Satan's determination to destroy the program of God. You want to know how determined Satan is? Study the book of Job. That he was coming to and fro the earth. Have you gone around the world? Have you gone around the earth even once? Yet Satan has that energy to keep going from pillar to post. Searching for men who are serious with God. Searching for men whose destinies count. I hope you know that Satan afflicts everybody. But in this end time, he's not looking for everybody. There are men who are equal to nations. These are the ones he's looking for. Rather than destroying 5,000 people in Yola, that's too much work he can zoom his attention on one rising prophet one rising church one rising apostle because in your destruction is the destruction of others so when satan heard that a deliverer called moses was born look at what satan was doing to find moses he killed every child because he was looking for one person 
One. Same thing happened when Jesus was born. Children cried. The Bible says there was lamentation and weeping in Ramah. Because one person. Do you know that for God to have brought you for this conference, whether you are inside or outside, this is a prophetic convergence. It's a sign that there is something about your destiny and there are many destinies that are connected to you. And let me tell you the truth. When Jesus came as Savior, because I hope you know that Satan is not that accurate. Even Satan did not know who the Savior was. So from Genesis, he has been looking for who is the Savior. He thought it was Moses. Then he thought it was Joseph. Once he suspects that you carry the DNA connected to salvation, he starts attacking immediately. From the killing of Abel by Cain, down to the killing of John, everything was an attempt to look for Jesus. So when he found out that the nation of Israel were now the covenant people, he said, that's it. From that time, every other nation started fighting Israel. What did they do? The Messiah would come out of them. The whole journey from Genesis 3 down to the Gospels is Satan searching for that seed of the woman. So every time he suspected that it was this and that, he would attack them. Now watch this carefully. So John showed up by the Spirit. And Satan had to use the Pharisees and the people to say, Are you the Messiah? He wanted to verify so he would kill him. And John was already given a code in the wilderness to identify the Messiah. I hope you know John was a prophet. While he was in the wilderness, look at the training of John. He had to eat locusts and wild honey, separated from his parents to be in the wilderness, to be the man who ordains Jesus. Look at that kind of training. And he was told in the wilderness that when you see him, you will know. So, John started the ministry of baptism. I hope you know that the ministry of baptism was number one, a prophetic adumbration as to what was going to happen to believers. But number two, it was a strategy to identify the Christ. So every time he poured water on people, the heavens are not open. Go, come. The heavens are not open. Go. The heavens are not open. Go. And then, one day he sees a 30 year old man standing and he says behold the lamb finally listen and in awe he said i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes because as a prophet i've seen that you'll be that deliverer jesus says suffer it to be so that all scripture will be fulfilled immediately he dipped him in water and brought him out god said satan there's no need hiding this is my beloved son that beloved son now watch this the moment God announced it the Bible says the spirit drove Jesus to the wilderness Satan suspended every other assignment and was waiting in the wilderness is it not in your Bible nothing else became a serious thing for Satan he waited patiently till Jesus was done fasting and he said Jesus let's discuss you can bow down to me and I will give you all the glories of this world. I don't have time. I would have taught you about the mystery of this she goddess in Revelation called Jezebel. There are two main strategies. Alignment and threat. So when you start, it is a principle of alignment. They want to be part of you. But if it does not work, they will threaten you. This is that you read all through scripture. Every time you see the manifestation of the spirit of Jezebel, she wants alignment. And if the alignment does not work, they will use force. Are we together? Do you know why John was beheaded? Look at me. You know why John was beheaded? The anger that the devil had, that so he knew the Messiah. And he kept that quote, I am the voice of one crying. The same way I hope you know he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah the Bible says and the same way Jezebel was looking for the head of Elijah that is the same way Herodias the same is the same principle because John the Baptist is a prophetic and apostolic spirit that foreruns revival every time the move of God is about to show up John must show up 
John is not a person you know I've taught you. John represents an apostolic and prophetic system. And it has two assignments. Number one, to restore fathers to sons, reconciliation. And number two, the spirit of judgment upon the wicked. The moment that happens, Jesus always comes. Whether as a person or as a move of God. Are we learning now? So I'm speaking about power. Without power, you will never be able to achieve the purposes of the kingdom. Please give us Psalm 66 and verse 3. Write it down, please. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Power is coming upon someone's life tonight. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Bible says, say unto God. Let's read together. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power power shall thy enemies submit themselves not through the greatness of your discussion not through the greatness of your english the language that the realm of the spirit understands is power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter while he was preaching the gospel in the house of cornelius speaking to the gentiles for the first time he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about by that power doing good it takes more than compassion to do good it takes power he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him are we still together for god was with him the messianic prophecy in Isaiah chapter 61 it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the broken-hearted are we together to deliver them that are bruised them that are captive and so on and so forth all that by the power of the Holy Ghost even Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man how can I be pregnant without a man he says don't worry this is the ministry of power to manifest impossible things is within the office of power he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai From the rising of the sun To the setting of the same Your name is to be hallowed Adonai Now Behold, I show you a mystery. Let me show you what it takes to carry power in this kingdom. And believe me, I don't claim to know everything. But this one, I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. The Bible says that every man who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace. Let me show you what it takes to carry the power of the Holy Spirit. By this teaching tonight, someone's destiny is opening up. Because finally, listen, for some of you, this is what you have seen in your dreams and visions. This realm, this dimension. You have been saying, Lord, in terms of the word and prayer, that power dimension is the desperate need for my ministry now, for my life now. Let me show you the key. Are you ready? Psalm 89 and verse 20. Please media quickly project it for us. And then I want you all to read the first four words. Please make sure it is the first four words. The first four words. Are you ready? One, two, read. One more time. One more time. For the last time now. The Bible says, I have found David. But the anointing was not looking for David. There was a kind of person David needed to become for the anointing to find him. I have found David. But it is not David the anointing is looking for. 
the anointing is looking for my servant. I have found a man of God in your land. But it is not a man of God that I'm looking for. I have found John. I have found Joshua. I found him since 2001. But there is a kind of person the anointing and the mantle is looking for. He simply calls that person my servant. I have found that businessman. But it is not the businessman the anointing is looking for. It is looking for my servant. My servant is not a name. My servant is a journey that turns David to become a certain kind of vessel. Are we together now? There are many, many people who want the anointing. But they do not know that until you become his servant. Until you become his servant. Until you become his servant in business. His servant in ministry. His servant on the crusade ground. For as long as you are still David. David has his own ambition. David has his own destiny. David has his own dreams. You don't use the anointing to do your own thing. You must become my servant. Do you know the journey that translates David to his servant? The name given to that journey is death. Death to everything. I have found David. It was easy finding David. But I'm still finding my servant. I have found the woman. But I'm still looking for my servant to turn her into a prophetess. Hmm. I have found Yola, great preachers, Kaliga Barakos Yata. But I'm still looking for my servant. I'm showing you what has separated many people into spiritual cadres. There are some who are still David, wanting the anointing, but others have become his servants. Get this revelation and it will change your life forever. I have found a nice gentleman who has a beautiful musical voice. But I'm still looking for my servant. I have found someone who opened a pharmacy. But I'm still looking for my servant. The anointing does not come upon men. The anointing comes upon his servants. Let's go back to that scripture. please help four people they will start running now by the anointing i just saw the spirit of grace like a dove just came upon four people and it's an empowerment by the spirit please help them so they don't injure themselves but they are going to start running right now by the spirit Please help them. Enter Kri Haskadela to Shafra Hasia. Kray Kadusha Brandi Gebelekosiata. Kragabede Gedebeleke to Shafra Skatebeletasia. Now listen, I want you to pay attention. Your life is about to change. There is a dimension of glory you are being immersed into. Your ministry and your life will never be the same. The old you is about to give way to a new you that is carrying potent, genuine spiritual power. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing Hear me For as long as self and flesh is still there it is not the anointing of the spirit that will rest upon you maybe something else can come upon you i have found give us that scripture david but i'm looking for my servant so for 20 years in ministry you have been david 
that is the reason why the anointing the mantle of your destiny the, the mantle has hovered around your church it has hovered around yola it has hovered around homes searching for servants listen to me let's finish that scripture finally david becomes his servant and the bible says with my holy oil i have anointed that servant next verse reading to 24 with whom my hand shall be established my arm shall also strengthen him by reason of the anointing the enemy shall not exert upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him 23 i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him it says but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his authority be exalted listen to me listen to me do you know why jesus was not anointed from birth do you know why Jesus was not anointed from age 12? Because the Bible says he had to learn obedience by the things he suffered. Even your Jesus did not get anointed just because he was the son of God. He had to go through the pathway. I have found Jesus, but I'm looking for the one who is prepared to serve the will of the father. And until age 30, before that anointing came, let me tell you this. There is no limit to what God can do in your life. There is no limit to the, um, the degree of unction and grace that can come upon you. The key is death that turns ordinary men to become servants. You know what it means to be a servant? The hallmark of servanthood is that you lose the ability to tell God no. Everything that comes from him is yes. For as long as you still have your agenda, for as long as you still have your pride, for as long as you still have your ministry, it is not the anointing from heaven that comes upon you. Tonight, God sent me here to tell someone, he has found you, but he's looking for his servant. He's looking for his servant. Oh, he's looking for his servant to turn you into a genuine apostle, a genuine prophet, a genuine businessman. So in this miracle and impartation service, listen carefully. It is not just about shouting amen. Something must die in your heart. It says in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. Something has to die for you to see. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that flesh died, I saw the Lord. You cannot see him when there are two kings. One king must die. Uzziah had to die to see the other king. There cannot be two thrones in your heart. No. Listen carefully. I wish I had the time to begin to tell you my journey in the spirit and my journey with God <laughs> but this anointing that we have downplayed that we have limited to just falling down and standing up or limited to just calling names and prophesying as wonderful as that is let me tell you there are layers and there are dimensions and there are levels of the anointing there are virgin dimensions that God wants to. I hope you know that the prophecy upon the church age is that the former and the latter reign. Do you know what that means? There are mantles. This, I hope you know mantles do not leave the earth to heaven. No, no. Every mantle you read in the Bible is still on earth. But there is a kind of believer that must carry it. And it's not by claiming. It's by the sacrifice of death. Help those under the anointing. Spirit of God is pruning and circumcising men. I believe that is Yola is stepping into a prophetic, a very prophetic season. I truly believe that. That there are men and women who are rising by the Spirit. 
men and women who are dead enough to carry these end time mantles it will take being more than a preacher it will take being more than a man of god it will take being more than a businessman it is for those who have vowed to serve the purposes of the king in life and in death hallelujah sit down for five minutes please let me establish two more things about the anointing and then we'll pray be sensitive something is happening here we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear I see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain open us love gates Shade ke para sabe sakata Kais ka de balaka ta pras ke pede ke ta Kam prakata baka to se ke te frege de bele ke ta Open the flood gates of heaven Ten ta shamas ka va sabra ke te bale ko siata Open the flood gates. I raised that song because I saw a vision. I just saw a vision of rain coming. And the scripture that came to me is until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine for a forest. We see the rain, see the rain. Your ministry is about to receive that dew of Hammon afresh again. Now, please sit down. Fire is burning in this place. I need to show you two things before we begin to pray. Fire is burning in this place. Finally, His Majesty is finding His servant. Where are all those young men in your prayer groups? God has brought you here. It's time to be ignited by fire, by the spirit of the living God. It's been a season of training with the spirit. Now it's time for your eyes to see. To see afresh. To see afresh. Open the floodgates of heaven. Ena masi na banada, shala da la da, she da bara sa da bala da bala da bala kuzi da da. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Many of you, let me explain something to you. Don't think that you are, I'm wasting your time. What is happening to you <laughs> is that you are being immersed. There is a kind of glory. You know how you marinate something? because you want to fry it or you want to cook it this is what is happening to you these songs are not just special numbers i'm not a musician they are ladders in the spirit there is an ascendance that is happening to your spirit man as you are under this influence it said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without signification Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, 
and run some cap TVs right yet. Oh, come, oh, come, me, man, you well, and run some cap TVs right yet. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Yola has come to you. He's Israel. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal. The glory of the risen Lord. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence come. Reveal the glory of There are five people God is showing me. Five people. You are all ladies. I'm seeing a very strong mantle, prophetic psalmistry. This is what is coming upon you. Kabira skeda liakata, embre ketaskiata. I call deep to be unlocked within your spirit, man. In the name of Jesus Christ. and out of your belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water out of your belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water out of your city shall flow Rivers of living water Hallelujah let me show you two keys for receiving the anointing and then we'll begin to pray my God please sit down if you can ladies and gentlemen what you are experiencing tonight is a ministry of the paraclet the spirit of the living god hear me ladies and gentlemen there are many of you your ministries will carry these mantles you will go back and the power of god will sweep across this city in ways that you cannot imagine Let me show you two keys. Please be seated if you can. There are two. There are two biblical keys. I know that the waters has been stirred. Huh. There are two keys to receiving anointings, mantles, and graces. 
and I want to show you the keys now and then we'll pray please don't be distracted if this is all we do tonight many of you will not forget this day for a very long time for how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly like the eagles when you don't know the way is power at work in you changing everything in obedience to Christ that's what God is doing is changing everything for someone here swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything The first key that controls the reception of strange graces and mantles, please write it, is an encounter with God himself. When you have an encounter with the God of the Bible, you can receive as a reward for encountering God directly from God. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus how God anointed Jesus how God anointed Jesus God can anoint men how God anointed Jesus direct encounters with God Solomon slept and had a dream and received an impartation of an understanding heart and the spirit of wisdom directly from God. But number two, which is the more common pattern we see in scripture, is through the mystery called impartation. Write it down please. Impartation. Impartation. Romans 1 11 Paul was speaking to the church in Rome he said for I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established I think it was in Philippians 1 verse 7 or so he said ye all are partakers of my grace when God grants a man access to an anointing, you see, the anointing and the graces of God are responsible for the dimensions of spiritual possibilities that we experience in this kingdom. So, the grace for favor will not produce healing. No, it will produce favor. These graces have jurisdiction of operation. So, don't just say, I am anointed. No. The anointing and the distribution of graces they are jurisdictional in operation the anointing for prosperity will not raise the dead it has its jurisdiction so the bible says in second corinthians 9 and verse 8 it says and god is able to make all grace say all grace not some grace all grace all the dimensions of grace are bound towards you so that he on account of those graces having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work god is able to make all grace please take it higher for me are we together now all grace don't say apostle i have the prophetic that's not the only thing needed for your destiny 
your heart must be open to receive all grace the bible says speaking to moses it says and thou shalt take joshua in whom is the spirit already and thou shalt lay your hands upon him and anoint him he says and then thou shalt take some of your honor and you will give to him to a man who is already anointed listen to me co-laborers in the gospel by the privilege of God's grace I can tell you there is much more we can do for the kingdom but our possibilities are limited by the extent of grace and the dimensions of grace that are at work in us you see the apostolic and the uh, prophetic anointing works like this when you come into a region because of how God has built you by the election of grace and the sacrifice of alignment you are able to assume whatever mold God wants to release and distribute the graces that are deficient within a territory are we together now you can know the graces that are deficient within the territory by the absence of certain testimonies all you need to do is to take an honest appraisal of your life and an honest appraisal of your ministry and an honest appraisal of your test or your of your territory you can tell the graces that are there and the graces that are not there and you can tell the degree of what grace is there because grace and peace can be multiplied by the time the sick still remain sick there is a grace that has not yet come upon your territory by the time lives and destinies are still confused that means there is a level of the accurate manifestation of the character of the prophetic to bring direction that is missing by the time the average believer in Adamawa and Yola is bankrupt of stature it means there is a dimension of the prophetic revelatory dimension of teaching that is not there because there is a grace that was upon Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9 the Bible says when that grace comes upon a man you can make all men see all men can see regardless your educational background regardless your pedigree once that grace is upon you it can make all men see when there's widespread poverty across a territory there is what the Bible calls the power to get wealth it means that engracing is not yet there my assignment tonight having endured in the course of this conference is that among the many things God is going to be doing is he's going to be distributing spiritual possibilities in addition to that which you have received that there can be higher measures of the same grace and then virgin dimensions of grace that your hands and your destiny and your ministry has not yet captured for job said there is a path which no fowl has seen that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are virgin dimensions in the spirit ladies and gentlemen when it has to do with exploring the deep things in god there are no generals there we the best of us still remains a toddler compared to the vast riches of what is available to the saints so paul prayed this way i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ is that true that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know he was praying over the church in Ephesus to comprehend the kind of power that was exalted when Christ was raised from the dead and exalted to be far above every throne dominion principalities and every name that is named not only in this world but even in the world to come dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the face of development lord grant me the discipline